Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about uh, tickets. My name is Florent and I will show you how you can mint NFT in parallel in a few seconds using uh, tickets. So what are tickets? T tickets are a way to reserve a sequence number. An account has a sequence number, here you can see 101, and that sequence number will be used every time we submit a transaction to the ledger. For each new transaction, the sequence will be incremented by one. So here we have a sequence again, 101. If we submit a payment, the uh, next one will be 102, 103, etc. But in the case of tickets, so we'll, new, we'll use a new transaction type called ticket create, and we'll define the number of tickets we want to create. It can be from one to 250. So here in this example, we have a ticket count of three. We'll create three tickets, which means that we'll set aside uh, three sequence numbers here. So sequence 102, sequence 103, and sequence 104. What does that mean is that then we'll be able to use those three sequences to submit a transaction in the future uh, at any time we want uh, in different orders. So we can submit a, a, a payment with 103 first, for example, and then with 102 and 104. And once we, when we create the, t, the, the tickets, the account sequence uh, uh, itself will be updated to uh, 105 here in this example, uh, which comes of course after 104. And so we create the tickets, they are set aside, the sequence uh, for the account is updated to 105, and if we want to keep submitting normal transactions, uh, then we'll use 105, 106, 107, etc., etc. So let's see how we can use um, how we can use them, those uh, those tickets to some to to create NFT in parallel. So I'm going to my editor, Visual Studio Code, and I am in a new directory called Tickets NFT. And here we are starting from scratch, and we'll create a new project using uh, uh, JavaScript. So I am running npm init uh, yes to create the package.json. Here we are. Then we need to install a few dependencies, so we'll install xrpl.js, uh, npm install xrpl. It's going to take a few seconds to install. Then we'll install a couple of uh, dev dependencies that I like to use. We'll do an npm i-d, prettier, ts node, and I think, yeah, prettier plugin organizing port. It's optional, but, um, but I like to use that to keep the code, uh, the code nice. Let's wait a few seconds for this to, to install. All right, now we have, uh, we have this. What I'm gonna do, I'm also, also gonna use uh, a TS config that I have already prepared, so I'm just gonna copy it in that, um, in that directory, and I'm gonna also copy a prettier.rc file that I have also prepared, just uh, so when, every time I will save in VS Code, that's a setting, the .ts file will be automatically formatted. All right, so we have this now. I'm going to create an SRC directory where I'm going to put my uh, my code. I'm going to create an index.ts file here, and we'll start uh, we'll start coding. So I'm going to create just a, a main function here. I don't need to export that actually. So a main function where we'll execute our code. So first thing we need to do is to initiate the client again. That's what we need to do for. Uh, every every code every time we interact with the ledger so we have the client so we initiate a new client and we need to pass the the public URL for for this client so we can find it on xrpl.org on xrpl.org on uh, the public servers page so xrpl.org this URL and we'll take the testnet and the websocket here this URL and we'll use that for the client course, I need to also import the client from XRPL. Now we have this. First thing we need to do is to connect the client and of course to disconnect the client at the very end. And we'll put the code, the code here. We need to make this function async to use uh, await and promises. All right, so now that we have this, uh, first thing uh, we'll do is to create a wallet. So we'll create a wallet, and for that, 
um, we will use the, the client. So the client has a function called fund wallet, which will automatically uh, create a new, a new wallet for you, funded with, uh, I think, 1000 XRP or 10,000 XRP, we'll, uh, we'll check in a minute. So we can extract the wallet object here and we can rename it to like mint wallet because we'll use again this uh, wallet to mint NFTs. So that's the, the mint wallet. I can console log this wallet here to get access then to the public address and we can check the public address uh, in, the, in the Explorer. All right, so now that we have this, let's do a very like a step one of this exercise. We'll have two steps. So one is to create the tickets and then the second one will be to mint NFT in parallel. So create tickets for this account, so mint wallet. So first thing to do that, we need to create the transaction type. So uh, ticket create. So XRPL.js export uh, a type or an interface called the ticket create that we'll use here to create the object. As, um, as you may know, so for every transaction on the XRP ledger, we need a few, a few things. So the account, uh, which is the public address of uh, the wallet emitting that transaction. So that would be mint wallet dot address. We need the transaction type that would be in ticket create. And the last one, which is specific to this, uh, this transaction type ticket create, that will be the ticket count. And here, uh, let's say we want 30 tickets. Um, so we'll, we'll mean 30 NFT in the end. Take into account that uh, an, a ticket is an object on the ledger. So you will require an owner reserve, which is a 2XRP, 2XRP per ticket. So here in that case, I will need 60 XRP as a reserve. They are, they are, the XRP are placed as a reserve when you create it, but also they are released when you did it, when you use the ticket. So when the NFTs will be minted, the ticket, the XRP in the reserve will be released and will be, will be available for use again. So once we have this transaction created, then we can submit that to the ledger and we'll use the client again. So submit and wait. We pass the ticket create transaction here, and then we pass an object to uh, with two fields. One is autofill, which will automatically add several fields to this uh, ticket create transaction. For example, the last ledger sequence or the, the fees. And the second one will be the wallet, which will contain the private key and that will allow uh, the function to sign uh, the, the transaction for us. And here, so we need to pass the mint wallet. Once we have this, we can console log the response. I'm just gonna stringify it in case there are objects there. Uh, so response null and two. All right. Let's try to execute that and let's see for now if it works. I'm gonna run. Uh, so I forgot to update the package.json. So I'm just going to do a start here. And then that would be TS node src index.ts. I'm going to run npm start. And we should have first like the wallet, which is created with the address. And then we'll have the response of the, the ticket create transaction. So let's wait a couple of seconds. The fund wallet function will also wait for the wallet to be uh, to be funded with a 1000 or 10,000 XRP. We have the address here. And in the end, we have test success here. Uh, so the ticket create transaction has been created. And you can see, so we have like several ticket sequence, which are set aside. So 47, they are in different orders, but we should have like 30 objects like this here. So let's go quickly to our Explorer. I can type the public address of my account. Here we see that we have, uh, you see the reserve 70. So we have 10, 10 XRP for the base reserve and we have 30 times two uh, XRP. So 60, 10 plus 60, 70 XRP as a reserve. And again, so the faucet uh, funded it with, uh, with 10,000 XRP. Great, okay, so now that's uh, step number one. Step number two, we will mint the NFT in, in parallel. So step number two, 
mint NFTs in parallel. All right, so to do that first, we'll retrieve the um, tickets that the account contains. So let's do const um, tickets, account tickets, and that will be, we'll use the client again. The client will send a request and the request will be account object, account object. I invite you to go to xrpl.org. If you search for account objects, you should find also the page uh, page for this. And uh, in the GitHub repo, uh, in the description of this uh, video, you will also find the link uh, to to this um, to, to xrpl.org. Then we need the account. So the account here, we need the mint wallet dot address and the type. We can specify the type of object we want, and in that case, that will be ticket. So here we have a, we'll have a response uh, containing all the tickets of that uh, that wallet. So actually, here my naming is not uh, not the best. So let's say let's say account uh, account objects, and below that we can say account ticket. We'll extract that from the from the response. So we'll have account objects dot result dot account objects here. And we can type that as uh, an array of tickets. And uh, the type is coming from, again, XRPL. You see, the, the SDK. So we have this. And now, so what we're going to do is that we're going to submit the transactions in, um, in parallel. So we'll use, uh, we'll create promises, basically, in, uh, in JavaScript. So we have the NFT mint promises which are equal to the account tickets. We are mapping uh, on that array. And for each ticket, we'll create the NFT mint. So const NFT mint, which is an NF token mint type. Same thing, we need an account. So that would be the mint wallet, not address. We need a transaction type, that would be NF token mint. And that would be we need as well the taxon. So here we can set it to zero. We need the URI. So for the URI, we can go, uh, for example, to to Jiffy. Uh, that's sometimes I like to do that. So let's go to Jiffy.com. We can take any um, any NFT image that we want. Sorry, we can click on share. We copy the the GIF link. We go back to our code. And we need to set it in uh, in hexadecimal, so we can use an helper from XRPL, which is convert string to X, and we'll then copy and I mean pass the um, the URL of that uh, that GIF. Next thing we need to do here is to set the sequence to zero. That's uh, that's required for that kind of uh, I mean to, for using uh, tickets, and then we'll use instead of uh, a normal sequence that we would use is the ticket sequence. And here we'll use the ticket uh, ticket sequence here. That's um, that's what's important. We can leave the last ledger sequence as um, undefined. Here it doesn't uh, so it doesn't expire. And finally, we can uh, return uh, the client. So we'll use the client to submit and uh, and wait for the uh, the transaction. So actually, a wait is not needed here. We can submit and wait. We will pass the transaction, NFT mint. We'll again pass the auto field to true. For the fee, for example, the fee will be uh, added here. And the wallet. The wallet again is the mint, mint wallet. All right, so here if we see the type if for the NF mint promises, we should see a promise transaction response NF token mint. Okay, so now we'll use in JavaScript, so we'll use uh, so NFT responses. We'll use promise, promise dot all, and we'll pass the promises that we created before for the NFT mint. And uh, then, so once we have uh, we have that, I think we can also await await here, and then we can just console log. I can put a space here. 
in the terminal console log uh, the response so nft let me also stringify this nft responses just to um, structure them correctly and once we have this we should be able to uh, submit to start our code and uh, all the nft will be uh, minted in parallel so let's try i'm going to clear this i'm going to run npm start so we are going to create a new account first this takes a few seconds uh, for the account to be created here we have with a public address copying it then we are creating all the tickets and finally we are creating the promises and submitting them to the ledger and we should have the response here yeah here we have it's very long but we have all of them that's success so you see it took like just a few seconds let's go back to the explorer i'm gonna type my address here i'm gonna go to own nft I'm going to click on include uh, NFT without metadata and you can see all the NFTs are here. 30 NFT, all submitted in parallel. Here it is. So I hope uh, this was useful. Of course, we, we used it here for NFT, but you can use it for any kind of uh, transaction. Could be payments, for example. Uh, of course, if it's payment, make sure that you have enough funds in your, in your wallet, but uh, you can apply any transaction with, uh, with tickets. Thank you. I hope uh, again that was useful. Let me know your comments uh, on below that video and uh, see you uh, next for another video. Bye.